this is Craig Wesco recording for tcgplayer.com and today we're going to be playing a mono blue devotion deck in modern. Uh, so basically this is a deck that uh, I kind of came up with. I've been working with devotion for a little bit. The uh, I had mono white devotion last week and that was pretty cool but I wanted to come up with something new for a new video. And it started out with a few different iterations. I had Nykthos in the original build, and Nykthos didn't really work out that great. Um, the idea was also to play the blue ley line that gives all your cards flash. I even tried Pillapala um, to go infinite, but uh, none of those versions kind of worked out as well as this one. This is the version that I think uh, works better than anything else I tried for, for blue devotion. Uh, and basically, the only payoff for Blue Devotion is Master of Waves in this build. Uh, but it does give you a pretty good payoff. And there's a few interesting interactions with this card in this deck. So Master of Waves, the primary uh, reason to be playing all these blue permanents to gain our, uh, get our Devotion up, uh, means you get to make as many elemental tokens as you have Devotion. So you get automatically one, because Master's Mana Cost has one blue in it. Uh, and then you get one additional one for each um, blue mana symbol and all your permanents on the battlefield. So one way to increase your devotion is spreading seas. You spread their land, and you get a you increase your devotion by one, and it replaces itself by drawing a card. So spreading seas and field of ruin very good right now in a format with uh, a lot of Valakut and Tron. Um, so they're especially good right now, I think. And then it also it's pretty good against Jund and other type decks like that that have three color, especially non-blue mana bases. Uh, and also to combat creature lands and other utility lands. Uh, it's just a pretty overall good card right now. And then you also have Vendillion Click, which gives us two devotion, disrupts the opponent, good against counterspell, combo decks, uh, things like that. Um, lets us know what's up so we know what to use our counter magic on. And it also counts, it's a fairy, which is relevant for a Spell Stutter Sprite. So Spell Stutter will usually just counter a one mana spell, which there's a lot of those in Modern. Uh, but if you have two Spell Stutters, the second one can counter a two mana spell. And uh, if you have a Vendillion Click and a Spell Stutter or two, you can start countering um, bigger spells, like three mana spells. And you can also counter zero mana spells, so Living End, Ancestral Vision, uh, things like that uh, also can come up, and that's a very handy thing to have. Mausoleum Wanderer is another card that uh, can counterspell things. So it's the only spirit in the deck, so you can um, play another Wanderer. The second one will pump the first one, and if you have a Vial and you're Violing in the second one, uh, to pump the first one, then you can basically sack it to counter something unless they pay two mana, which is pretty handy. And then another card in the deck that kind of works well with Wanderer because of the way Wanderer is worded is Grand Architect. So Architect gives all your blue creatures, which is every creature in the deck except Ballista and an active Smuggler's Copter, gives them all plus one plus one. But you could also pay a blue mana to make the Ballista or the Copter blue, so then they get the bonus anyway. So it's able to make any creature in the deck uh, plus one, plus one. It's just six of those, you have to pay a blue mana to do it. Um, and so the Wanderer, the way it's worded, you sacrifice unless they pay, uh, it's a counter spell unless they pay X, um, where X is its power. So whether that power is increased by playing a second copy of Wanderer, or whether it's increased by Grand Architect, it's still increased and uh, they have to pay the extra mana, so they have to pay two if you have a Wanderer and an Architect out. Um, so we have, between the Wanderer and the Spell Stutter Sprite and the Vendillion Click, we actually have quite a few ways to disrupt the opponent and to counter or take away some key card at a key moment. So that really helps us against combo decks, against some opposing disruption, and just allows us to kind of stay ahead on cards and tempo. Uh, so the other, there's a, a few other interesting synergies with this deck. Uh, the other one is Trinket Mage. So Trinket Mage, uh, it can find Ether Vial, but you'll almost never do that. Uh, the target main deck that you almost always get is Walking Ballista. So even though Ballista 
uh, you're never going to cast it for uh, less than, you know, for the one mana or less. Um, you can get it because it costs zero when it's in your library. So Trinket Mage can find Ballista, and then you go Ballistic with the Ballista by tapping all your mana and making it big. So we're, we only play 20 lands, so you're, you might be asking yourself, well, what's really the incentive to play Walking Ballista? Sure, you get it with Trinket Mage, but like the most you're going to cast it for is like one or two man, one or two counters, right? Well, that's uh, that's where Grand Architect comes into play. So the Architect not only gives all your blue creatures plus one plus one, but also allows you to tap each of your blue creatures to produce two colorless mana um, for each one. The, um, the, the drawback is that you can only use this mana to activate or cast artifacts, okay? But that's fine because really what we're, what we're doing is we're using that mana to cast or pump our Ballista, which is an artifact. So we could just tap all our creatures to add two mana per creature and then tap our lands. So if we have four lands and like three creatures, that's 10 mana. So that's a 5-5 five, five Ballista on turn four. So that's pretty cool, right? You just go Mausoleum Wanderer into Spell Strutter Sprite into Architect um, into Ballista. Or if you have a, a Vial, maybe you can go even crazier and do the Trinket Mage to get the Ballista and cast the Architect in the same turn and tap all your creatures and cast a Ballista for just a whole bunch of mana. And uh, so there's really cool interaction between Architect and Ballista, just being able to cast it for a bunch of counters. And Ballista is just a really good card right now uh, with all the, you know, decks in the format, with all the Birds of Paradise, Noble Hierarchs, and, you know, the Collected Company decks that have the creature combos that, you know, with a lot of one toughness and two toughness creatures in the format that they all die to Ballista. Ballista also kills things like Dark Confidant and uh, all sorts of other cards, you know, Affinity, it kills half the creatures in their deck. It's a colorless creature, so it can block Edge Champion. You can ping off all their flyers, uh, including their Nexus, their Blink Moth, and their Ink Moth. Uh, if it, like, Infect can't beat this card. There's just a lot of decks that are uh, have a lot of difficulty with Ballista, especially when we have a card like Architect that allows us to gain a whole bunch of mana advantage. So a couple other things the Architect uh, can do that are pretty cool. You can cast the Architect, immediately tap the Architect for two mana, because it's not uh, an ability that requires uh, tap as the activation. Um, the way it's worded, you could just tap the creature. So you can do it even when the creature is uh, summoning sick. Um, and so you can play the Architect and tap it and just use that two mana to cast a Smuggler's Copter. So that's a pretty interesting thing. You just get a free Smuggler's Copter, basically. You don't have to pay any mana to cast it. You just play it at the same turn you played the Architect. Um, but the other really cool thing, so the, the main reason, uh, the, the, the main thing the, the Architect does is allows us to cast Ballista for a bunch of mana uh, early on. Uh, in addition to making our 1-1 Flyers, the Wander and the Sprite, into more relevant attackers, uh, and also making our Trinket Mage into a more relevant body to 3-3, the click becomes a 4-2 four, four, and things like that. But the, the creature that really interacts with it really well uh, on the other side, so the Ballista interacts with it really well with the mana producing ability, but the Master of Waves interacts with the bonus really well. Because you play, let's say, Architect, and then you play Master of Waves, and you make maybe three or four elemental tokens. Well, the drawback of the Master of Waves is that if they kill the Master of Waves, let's say they cast uh, Terminate, or, well, you can't Terminate because it's pro-red. Let's say they cast maybe Path to Exile on the Master of Waves. Well, the drawback of Master of Waves is that when the Master dies, all the elementals, all the elementals die, because the Master gives all the elementals uh, plus one, plus one, and they come out as one zero creatures. So in order to be alive as two ones, the master has to stay alive. Well, if you get two masters on the battlefield, that's extra good because there are three two elementals. And if you kill one of the masters, the other one keeps all the elementals alive because there's still two ones. But Grand Architect does the same thing. So if you have the Architect out and then you play the master and then the master dies, well, the Architect is still giving all those blue elemental tokens plus one plus one, so there's still two one elemental tokens and they don't die. So 
the architect is actually a really cool synergistic creature with both master of waves and walking ballista and you know you want to hear the the really cool part as cool as both of those are when you have them all together it's like voltron where it works extremely well like it, it works even better than either of them with the architect by themselves because think about it you play the architect and then you play master of waves and make like maybe three if if that's the only creatures you have and make three tokens uh, you probably have something else you probably have a wanderer a sprite a spreading seas something like that maybe a trinket mage so let's say you just have one other thing on the battlefield so you make four elemental tokens when you cast the master of waves now with the architect's ability, you can tap all four of those elemental tokens to get two mana uh, per elemental. So you tap those, you get eight mana. You tap the master, you get 10 mana. You tap the architect, you get 12 mana. You tap whatever your other creature was, if it's a sprite or wanderer, and you get what? Uh, four, five, six, seven, 14 mana. So you can cast a ballista for like seven. And if you don't have any other permanents, if you don't have a spell starter or a wanderer, that's still a ballista for six. Like, that's pretty insane. So you go uh, turn three architect, turn four master of waves, tap all three tokens, the master and the architect, play a ballista for five. So on turn four, when assuming, well, you probably had other stuff you were doing to this point, but even if your first two plays of the game are turn three architect, turn four master of waves, you immediately can just play Ballista for five. So you can wipe out the opponent's board. You have an army of tokens for Master of Waves that are three twos. So you have three three twos uh, tokens. You have a Master of Waves, which is a three two, and a Grand Architect that's a one three, and a five five Ballista that if you want to, you can pay a blue to make it a six six. And then if you need to, you can tap all those creatures again for two mana apiece to pump more mana into the Ballista to pump the Ballista further. So. Yeah, this deck has some really cool synergi synergies with uh, with the creatures. Um, then we just have like some serum visions to smooth out the draws. Allows us to only play 20 lands. Uh, you, we play a Manamo. Sometimes we can untap a Vandalian click, but usually it's just you know a card that gets around boil and choke. And uh, a Boro actually has some some utility, where uh, since we have six colorless lands, we only have 14 blue. And we have cards like Architect and Click that require multiple blue mana. So a Boro sometimes actually comes in handy. It allows you to sort of semi-filter a colorless mana into blue. So you tap like the Academy Ruins or the Field of Ruin for colorless. Then you use that. Then you, you tap the Aboro for blue. Then you use that colorless mana to return a Boro to your hand. You play a Boro as your land drop for the turn. You tap it for blue. So you basically got two blue mana out of the single Aboro. Uh, by filtering a colorless mana from one of your colorless lands. So that comes up if you have a draw that has like two Field of Ruins and an Aboro and no other blue mana, and it allows you to still cast the Architect or the Click uh, with that mana. Um, so then the, the last few cards, we have the, we talked about Field of Ruin and Spreading Seas as like eight ways to disrupt the Tron, Valakit type strategies, um, and also, you know, hinder the development of like the three color decks. Uh, but then the other really cool card, the last card I want to talk about in the main deck, is Academy Ruins. So Academy Ruins uh, allows us to get back the Ballista. So once we once we get our engine online, let's say we Trinket Mage, find the Ballista, we get the Architect going, uh, and then the Ballista just kind of mows down the opponent's team, and they're like, all right, finally, dealt with the Ballista, now I can cast my creatures again. All right, well, Academy Ruins can put that Ballista right back on top. So then you have to basically do it all over again and you're basically locked out of uh, playing small creatures as long as we have this engine going and then the vial just kind of acts as further uh, way to let us cast all our creatures because we have 26 creatures in the deck like a lot of them most of them 22 of them can be cast off the vial so it's a way to increase our, our mana with vial uh, so that's the main deck a uh, lot to say about that uh, the sideboard we have four ceremonious rejection, really good against uh, Tron decks, affinity decks, um, kind of hit or miss against a uh, an Eldrazi deck, depending on whether they have the the Cavern of Souls. But it can still counter All Is Dust, which is one of their best cards in the matchup, and it can counter a number of other things as well. 
uh, even if they have the cavern. But then again, we have eight ways to deal with the cavern of Sol's main deck. So even if they do draw a cavern, there's a good chance it only lasts for a turn, and we deal with it, then ceremonious rejection. We can start countering the Thought Not Seers and Reality Smashers and all that good stuff once again. So that card's really good. Um, Void Mage Prodigy. So Kai has not really gotten a ton of love in, uh, in Modern. Um, power level is a little low compared to a lot of the other options in the format, but uh, I think it works really well in this deck. So against a lot of the decks that are heavy spell-based or is re uh, reliant on resolving a few key spells or big mana spells, things like that, uh, this card is really effective, especially since a large number of our creatures happen to be wizards. So this one's a spirit, but this one's a fairy wizard. And this one is a fairy wizard. This one is a Vidalcan artificer. This one is a human wizard. And this one is a merfolk wizard. So the, the ones that we want to sacrifice the most, we want to sacrifice Trinket Mage, we want to sacrifice uh, Spell Stutter Sprite, and then sometimes if we need to, we can sacrifice an Adelian Click, uh, or if we really need to, we can sack the Master of Waves after, say, all the tokens from it die. Um, and then if we need to, we could just sacrifice itself, because, well, that's a wizard too. Um, so this is a really cool card. Uh, given that we have so much blue mana and we have a lot of wizards, it's actually pretty effective in some matchups. It's a way to kind of lock people out of the game. Um, as kind of strange as that sounds, it's like a soft lock. We have the fourth Trinket Mage, mostly because uh, the only thing to get main deck, I mean, we can get Vile, but we're really just getting Blist every time main, um, and we don't really need the fourth one. But then after sideboard, we get some bullets that we Trinket Mage for, so we want the fourth Trinket Mage in the postboard games when we bring in the appropriate bullets. So let's talk about some of those, those uh, targets for the Trinket Mage. One is Basilisk Collar. Uh, this is taking a little page out of the Eldrazi deck where uh, we have Walking Ballista and we have Basilisk Collar. And interestingly enough, Trinket Mage can find either half of that combo. So once we get that online, then the Ballista can just shoot down any creatures in the opponent's deck. So it just pings the creature, it has Death Touch, so the creature dies, and we gain one life. And it's also a way to gain life, so we just put on a creature and start attacking or blocking, um, and just you know gets us out of burn range. And, uh, and also just, it gives the creature death touch. So we have a lot of small toughness or small power creatures and against a deck with larger creatures, we could just block. So, okay, cool. Like strap Basilisk Caller onto my Wanderer, block your like Thought Knots here or counter your spell with a Spell Starter Sprite then hook it up with a Caller and block your Tarmogoyf. Um, Trinket Mage goes and gets the Caller and then you put it on the Trinket Mage. Um, you know, things like that. So. Uh, it's, it's just a pretty effective card in a lot of the any matchup where they have big creatures that we want to kill. And uh, yeah, so, so the Caller is a good option to have. And then we have Graft Digger's Cage. Graft Digger's Cage is really effective against Collected Company decks. It's really good against, uh, you know, once I have Court of Calling, stuff like that, it shuts all that down. It's good against decks that rely on the graveyard for certain things, whether it's a graveyard combo, keeps Kitchen Finks from coming back, um, keeps people from flashing anything back, like Lingering Souls and whatnot. Um, it's just a pretty effective card that we can tutor for with the Trinket Mage. Uh, Pything Needle, it's another one. It's our way to Trinket Mage for an answer to Planeswalkers or to any sort of artifact with uh, an important activated ability or a creature with an ability. Sometimes we hit a land uh, that can be like a creature land or a land with a particular ability that's that's um, effective. And then, you know, some some matchups, it's just like Lantern where you just name their ghoul caller's bell or whatever. Uh, so it's just, you know, it's kind of a, a, a very versatile card that you can uh, trinket mage for that can answer a lot of things. Uh, another one is Chalice of the Void. So against a deck like Living End, you do, uh, ch a Trinket Mage for it, and then you immediately play it for zero. So then you have basically five ways to cast a Chalice for zero by turn three, which is really good against that deck. Or if you're watching Corbin Hostler's uh, videos lately, you'll see that he piloted a uh, mono blue Living End deck around the uh, As Foretold. 
Well, that th this card is great against them because it counters all their living ends and their ancestral visions. So, uh, in any deck like that, uh, Chalice for zero, but then Chalice for one, since we're a mono blue deck, that's really all we can do, but that's fine. Chalice for zero and Chalice for one as our options are perfectly good enough to, as a Trinket Mage target because there's a lot of decks in the format that are really have a really good, difficult time against a Chalice for one. And it doesn't really hurt us that much. It just stops our visions, our vials, and our wanders. Well, after like the first turn of the game, none of those cards are really super effective anyway. Um, so it's it's going to hurt our opponents a lot more than us in a lot of matchups. And then Engineered Explosives. This is a card that, for the videos, it is not in my sideboard, but it's the one card that I added to the deck after the videos. Um, I, I took out Brittle Effigy. So Brittle Effigy is a way to deal with big creatures, um, but we already kind of have that with Basilisk Collar, so it's a little redundant, whereas Engineered Explosives gives us a really powerful option that I think uh, is, is more important to have in our sideboard. So with the, the Engineered Explosives, it's a way to get around all the one mana spells. So whether it's uh, a bunch of artifacts, whether it's uh, some creatures like Death Shadows and stuff, um, whether it's uh, even enchantments, it deals with enchantments. So sometimes there's one mana enchantments that you need to kill. And it just kind of wipes everything out, which is really cool. And it also deals with a, a board full of tokens if uh, the opponent is playing a, a token-centric strategy. So if you play against a storm deck or something and they empty the warrens for a whole bunch, you could just trinket mage for an explosives, play it for zero, uh, sack it. So uh, let's see, Spellskite is the last card. Um, it, you can't tutor for it with trinket mage, but it's just an effective card, um, protects some of our creatures and good against like burn decks and infect decks, things like that. So yeah, this deck, uh, it's uh, pretty sweet. I've been pretty happy with it lately. It took a little bit of iterations. I can look at those real quick. Like some of the cards I tested and in, in some other builds, uh, this one's pretty similar. This one, I had like Glenelendra, Archmage, didn't really work out. Master of Waves is just way better. I, I tried Thassa, which was okay, but it was just uh, not disruptive enough. Um, not really a main deck card, bad in too many matchups. I uh, tried that, just worse than the Mausoleum Wanderer. Uh, let's see, what else did I try? I think that's pretty much the same. Oh, Pillapala, this was an interesting one. It's actually a, a, a combo where you play the Pillapala, then you play Grand Architect, and then you tap the Pillapala for, I'm sorry, you tap the Grand Architect for two mana to untap the Pillapala, like after you attack with it. Or you make the Pillapala blue first, and then tap the Pillapala and get it started that way. But as long as the Pillapala doesn't have summoning sickness, you can basically generate infinite blue mana just with these two cards. So you make the Pillapala blue, then you just keep tapping and untapping the Pillapala to untap itself and tap it for two mana. And each time the two mana generated from the Architect untaps the Pillapala. So then what you net is the blue mana that you produce off the Pillapala for each iteration. So then you just get infinite blue mana and with that blue mana, you can play a Ballista for infinite, or a Trinket Mage to find the Ballista and play it for infinite. Um, I, I tried Kira, which was you know kind of neat. It was kind of serving a similar role to Spell Skite. Um, it was kind of weave a lot of three drops, though. And the other ones were more effective. Sig was kind of neat, but didn't really do enough. Nykthos didn't generate enough devotion for it to really be worth it. We need, would rather have the colorless... Uh, lands to disrupt the opponent so yeah this is like this was the iteration that i was most happy with and uh this is the version we're going to use the one change is uh for the videos we have effigy in the sideboard and i would recommend instead to play the explosives so let's uh let's give this deck a whirl